Hello everyone again and welcome to this particular video and in here we're going to be exploring the determining of the mean speed of molecules and this is really different from the root mean squared of molecules speed and how this is going to be applicable mainly dealing with mean speed of molecules is going to be focusing mainly on integration and how is this actually done we're going to start off really simple and then we go a little bit complicated and then back to simple and while we are jumping into this and many more videos to come please don't forget to hit that like share and subscribe by that way you can keep track and also get up to date on the things that are actually coming up in the future on this channel so the big idea question in this particular video is to calculate the mean speed of molecules which is pretty much gases and the big question that will be asked is what is the mean speed not the root mean squared speed of nitrogen molecules in air at 25 degrees celsius so the big first step approach is focusing mainly on the mean speed and what does this actually mean mean speed is obtained by multiplying each speed by the factor of molecules that have that speed then add the product together so which means here that if these particular purple color molecules they actually share the same speed which is v1 and v2 is the ones that are orange with a different speed but they are common in that case we are going to multiply the velocity by the fraction of the molecules that has that particular speed and once you're done with that you add the products together so since you have these actually as a simple base what we decided to focus mainly on is that this is not a discrete state because in real life this is a continuous experience of speeds and this continuous range actually leads us to do away with the addition sign and deal mainly with integration so if you're going from zero velocity to infinity velocities we don't want to focus on the discrete parts but want to look at the spectrum of speeds that are around that particular region therefore we have to remove the addition sign thereby using integration from zero to infinity and then we're going to use the fraction of molecules that expresses that specific speed as the fv with dv and then you multiply that by the speed that is in question so the product of the fraction and the speed is represented as the particular function inside the integration sign therefore in this case once we dive into the ne next part which involves focusing on what f at v truly represents in terms of molecular speeds we actually notice that based on various proofs that this is expressed as this particular constant which is 4 pi all multiplied by to the power of 3 over 2 of that particular molecular weight of that particular gas or divided by 2 pi r r which represents the ideal gas constant multiplied by the temperature and this is all multiplied by a specific constant no by a specific velocity variable that is expressed as v squared or multiplied by the e to the power of negative m which is a molecular weight multiplied by the velocity squared divided by 2rt and this is the part here is known as the constant and uh, why this other segment which is with respect to v which is the specific velocity all comprises of the fv of those particular fraction of molecules therefore using this particular expression into the mean speed we can incorporate this in terms of expressing our integration from zero to infinity and then where you see fv 
we actually put this particular expression which will lead us to put our pretty much equation two into equation one and therefore we have this long i would say complicated expression of integration and uh, once we have this actually taken care of we now need to do some cleanup which means that where i see my constants i put those at the front of the integration and by expression in terms of v or with respect to v will be inside the integration sign because the integration is applied to the velocity of or speed of those particular molecules so therefore in here once we have this expressed and now we have our integration now in terms of v we see that v is multiplied by v squared and that gives us v cubed and therefore this is rewritten in here as v cubed or multiplied by e to the power of those with respect to dv all integrated so once we have this expression taken care of and we see our constants outside of the integration sign what we see is that first we need to remember that there is a specific law that simplifies integration into constants which means that where we have uh, integration from infinity or from zero to infinity and uh, we have x which is a variable to the power of 3 or multiplied by e to the power of negative a x squared dx we actually get our result to be 1 over 2 a squared therefore in this case this particular integration expression is similar to what we have over here where our x is actually in terms of v which is the velocity and we see here that a can be extracted from that specific exponent power so in here we in this case we have uh negative a x squared to be equal to negative m over 2 rt or multiplied by v squared since x is equal to v the x squared and v squared cancels out and what we have for a is equal to m over 2 r t therefore since we have this as our expression for a we can actually integrate it into that particular expression for integration therefore our integration from zero to infinity where we have that expression is indeed equal to 1 over 2 all into bracket m over 2 rt all squared so what we notice here is that we just need to focus on the right side of that particular expression which is the constant and once we focus on the right side and we simplify it we actually have our expression in here to be 1 over the denominator which is also a fraction and once we simplify this we have our common numerator and denominator where we have 2 r squared time, times temperature squared over the molecular weight r squared so since we have this taken care of we're going to put this into our mean speed expression which is on the far right side of the screen so we see our integration we take that out and then we put our 2 r squared t squared over m squared and what we have is this particular expression not in terms of integration but now in terms of constants therefore since we have this taken care of we're going to simplify the mean speed and the mean speed in this case is going to be led into simplifying or opening the bracket which has the power 3 over 2 after you distribute it and once you distribute what we have is performing a simplified versions which means that we're collecting like terms thereby you're keeping the base and you're either adding or subtracting the exponents is and once you have that taken care of you simplify the powers or you evaluate the powers and what we have is our mean speed actually in terms of fractions now and once we have that we can take our roots out and what we have is 
the mean speed to be equal to the 8 over pi multiplied by rt over m all to the square root. So this is the ideal mean speed of any gas in any period of temperature. So therefore, in here, once we have this specific expression for determining the speed of any single ideal gas molecule, ideally, then you can use that expression in the question where we are asked to find the mean speed of nitrogen gas at in air at 25 degrees Celsius. So you're going to use this particular expression and we can actually determine what our R is, which is the ideal gas constant, which is 8.314. And don't forget that the units must be aligned with temperature, which is measured in kelvins. And we have our molecular weight of nitrogen gas. Take note that it is N2, and you're adding the molecular weight of nitrogen twice, which means that we're going to have 28.02 grams per mole. So all these units must be aligned properly and then once you put those into the mean speed equation you will arrive at the mean speed of nitrogen gas at 25 degrees celsius to be equal to 475 meters per second so that is about it for this particular video in this video we are not only able to derive the equation for the mean speed of any ideal gas but also apply that to a question involving nitrogen gas at a specific temperature so thanks for following me through this don't forget also to subscribe and hit the like and also please comment section and share your thoughts or questions concerning mean speed and many more videos to come all the same stay smart and always always believe in yourselves